Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go slash Quest video. Now, as you'll probably know from watching my channel, I'm a big, big supporter of indie developers. So those kind of guys, they're probably all one, two, three man bands that kind of develop for the Oculus Go and other VR games. I like to kind of showcase their games, give you the heads up that they're coming, you know, and kind of help them get their games out there. Because it can be hard when you're kind of an indie dev and you don't have the big budgets that the big studios have. So I think it's only right that I do my part to kind of help promote them. To simplify the process on how they get their games on, they basically create them, they create an Oculus account, they upload them to Oculus's servers, Oculus themselves review it, make sure it's all okay and up to standard, and then if it is, they'll give them a release date and then it'll appear on the store. There are times, for whatever reason, that the game actually won't get released on the store. Now, they'll either reject it straight out and say you need to change something, or they'll do what's called keys only mode. And what that means is that the game won't appear on the store, but what they allow the developers to do is to to generate keys, so sort of serial keys for their game that they can give to people to download directly or sell by a third party or something like that, but they can't kind of get their game actually onto the store itself. So you can't go onto your Oculus Go store, you can't find the game, it just doesn't exist. However, if you were to contact the developer or they contact you, they can give you a key. It could then be a struggle then for the developers to be able to get those keys out of there, make people aware of the game. Uh, you know, how do you do that? If it's not on the store, that's the easiest way of doing it because you point people to the store, it appears as the new releases, it might go on special offer, they just can't do that. So they've got to find another way of doing it. And as you can imagine, these indie developers, they want to make a little bit of money out of their game and their time and effort they've put into it. Um, and if it's not on the store for them to sell directly, what else can they do? Well, there is another alternative. There is a third party store called Wear VR. And on Wear VR, you're able to go on there, you're able to kind of search for VR content. The developers themselves can upload their keys. So, those key license keys that they generate via Oculus, they can upload them to that store. And then they can sell those keys automatically via the website. You still need to redeem the key. Uh, I'll go through the process and how to do that. But it gives them a nice platform on which to be able to sell their game or their experience which they wouldn't have before. So in this video I'm going to show you quickly what Wear VR looks like, show you quickly two games that have been released on there for your Oculus Go and it's also something interesting I think that with the Oculus Quest coming out we know that Oculus are going to crack down hard on sort of the releases that get released. So indie developers and pretty much anywhere, any developer really is gonna have to work a lot harder to polish those games, to make them perfect, to be able to get them onto the Oculus Quest store. This may be an option for them as well. So if for whatever reason their game or app doesn't get up to the standard that Oculus expect, you can still potentially access it this way via keys only. So the games and apps still exist on the Oculus store. It's all official, gets downloaded via your uninstalled apps on your Oculus Go, but you get the key to to access it via the, this Wear VR website. So it could be good for those quest titles that don't make it either. So let's have a quick look. So here we are on the Wear VR website. So wearvr.com, it's essentially a marketplace. It sells other sort of uh, games and keys from other games and apps. Uh, so it's worth kind of a browse anyway. But all you need to do just to search something, it just pop it into this search bar here. You can see I've got put Symphony of Stars or Stars because I spelled it wrong the first time. It doesn't search, it doesn't find it if you do that. Uh, and Cybercycle. So that's the two I've uh, searched for. Uh, and here we go. So we've got Cybercycle. You get the kind of usual sort of screenshots of what you want. You can scroll down, you can get kind of more information about the developer and how many times it's been viewed and downloaded and all that sort of stuff. Um, and also then buy it. So you can sort of see it's $2 to buy this. You click that, you get the key uh, once you've paid for it. Um, and then you just pop that key into your account and you get the game. Uh, and same for Symphony of Stars. If you scroll up a little bit, you can see we've got a couple of trailers, which is quite cool. So having more than one video is a nice uh, thing to see. And some screenshots. And then if you scroll down, you can see more about the developer. They've got even more information, which is nice. So their social media stuff. Uh, how many downloads um, and uh, this one for example is available on daydream uh, oculus go samsung gear vr and htc Vive. so for three dollars uh, you can buy a key for each of those different platforms that's quite good uh, so you click that you go through the process of purchasing it once you've bought it you get your serial key what you then need to do with that is just go to the oculus website so oculus.com sign into your account i'm signing into mine here and then from the top right corner, you can go to my profile and then go to redeem code on the left. And then you pop your code into here, click redeem, and then that will give you 
the game on your Oculus Go. So on your Oculus Go, you just go to uninstalled apps in your library and you should find it in there. If you've got an Android phone, you can go down to settings and then redeem code if you scroll down near the bottom and pop the code in there if you prefer iOS or Apple. Unfortunately, you can't do it on that. You have to do it on the website. I think it's an interesting platform, especially as I was saying with Oculus Quest coming out. Uh, they're going to be sort of super strict and super hard on it. We may see things like Wear VR coming out, being more used. Uh, we are VR, is that how they kind of say it? Um, because, you know, if they can't get their games and apps onto the Oculus uh, Store, so for Quest or even the Go, uh, this is an alternative. This still gives you the official download that's stored on the Oculus servers, so you know that it's kind of, you know, nothing dodgy, and it's going to do nothing dodgy to your headset, but uh, you're not just downloading it and sort of siloing random stuff to your, to your headset and not being sure that it's 100% uh, legit. Um, and but gives these developers a way to still get their game out there, sell it, give them somewhere to point people to to get hold of it, um, and they can obviously choose the price. So you know, hopefully they'll sort of up and down their prices all the time and stuff. And you know, if if more developers out there are doing this, let me know. I'll be interested to take a look. Let's have a look at CyberCycle and Symphony of Stars. Here's the main menu of CyberCycle. It's changed since I first re um, reviewed it. So if you check back on my previous videos, I'll put a link above and down below to my original look at this. But they've updated it, done a lot of changes to it. And I know they're looking to do more. So it's something that gets evolved and updated over time. We can jump into tutorial, which I, I did do. And it's basically the developer kind of chatting through his game in a very conversational way that says, um, more times I think I've ever said um in my life. But it's, uh, it's nice that I think he's kind of trying to add that personal touch. Um, and, you know, going forward, I guess he'll, he might get somebody else to do it or um, script himself a little bit more. But you get yourself a... Uh, a, a hub essentially where you can kind of pull the trigger or actually press down on the touchpad to move around uh, you can bring out a cycle by kind of push clicking on left on the touchpad to point on your cycle and then you get a cycle to race around let's get rid of that pad oh I got lost my cycle there we go uh, let's race around so we can find ourselves you can do these sort of things from the main menu it's kind of nice that we've got a whole world to race around so we can just uh, race around to to the city or find a a track to do you can turn just by spin turning your controller actually i think down here is where the game is so the game pretty much is, the main game itself pretty much hasn't really changed since the main one uh, since the main video i did the review and um, the early look uh, but we can jump in here and this takes us to the kind of game menu you can do that's from the main menu if you want to you can choose different uh, levels there's three different uh, levels to choose from we'll choose the first one you can choose one versus one four or one and eight uh, we'll do one. We'll do one. One v eight. Why not? Uh, you get. You earn bits for winning it, and the more bits you get, you can go to the shop in the main city and buy some stuff. You can do free mode or challenges, and you have to click on them to choose them. It doesn't let you go past otherwise. Uh, but then you can just literally click in, and away we go. So we've got this uh, menu. I think the bloom and the kind of glowing effects have all kind of been toned down a little bit. Uh, so here we go. So you can see that in the sky, in the sky now, these orange things are actually where your opponents are. So it's quite hard to kind of figure out where your opponents were originally. So I wouldn't say this game is good for anybody who's got any form of motion sickness. You're not going to like this. But you can see you can jump. You can kind of touch your touchpad to jump. Your idea is, is to get in front of them and trap them with your uh, tail. So a bit like a game, a big giant game of snake. Oh, did he turn? Oh, he did. Uh, you've got no weapons in this mode, but it's only a couple of dollars for this, and it, and it plays relatively well. The levels keep changing, so the ramps keep coming up and down, uh, but it's uh, an interesting game, and I think if you want that kind of Tron experience, this is the easiest way to get it at the moment on the Oculus Go. Where are they? Where are they all gone? Oh, they're all up, all up above. So, up we go to go find them. Oh, I think they're... The floor changed as I was going up it. Oh, I think I got someone. I think that sound was me getting someone. So I think it still needs a bit of kind of tweaking and performance enhancements, and it's still kind of tricky to kind of know where your opponents are and what they're up to. But it's a fun game. I think a bit of multiplayer would be quite good fun. Uh, I think personally it would be quite nice to see a version where you're a bit more on a track, uh, a bit more like a snake where you're going just left and right, a bit more Tron-like, following a path rather than uh, going wherever you want. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of fun, kind of good game. And you can look around freely. Uh, so yeah, I mean, for $2, it's quite a fun little experience. I think multiplayer would ha help a lot, but um, for the work and the effort and the changes he's done to it so far, 
Uh, he's also put a lot of effort into it, so I'd imagine to see more changes going forward. So, yeah, I mean, check out on where VR if you get a chance. So here's Symphony of Stars, a space shooter. Uh, you can host a game, it has online play, so you can kind of play with each other, kind of uh, racing around space, capturing planets and that sort of thing. Uh, but we, I don't think there'll be anybody on there to join, so we'll just literally host a game ourselves. You can choose different factions, and each faction has a slightly different ship. I quite like this uh, clandestine ship, because you'll see it's a bit more kind of open and you can see a bit better. Some of the other ones are a bit more in kind of an enclosed ship with just windows. This one's like a almost like a dome and you can look around. Here you go, look. So you get the full ship. You start off in sort of a, a docking bay and you swipe up on your touchpad to uh, engage the throttle. And off you go. And the idea is to find these planets. And when you get to them, you can kind of shoot at the little sort of targets, press down and spend your credits, which is in the top right hand corner, to uh, get certain things. So you can either capture the planet or you can uh, spawn defenders, which I'm not seeing a defender, so I'm not sure what they are. But there are other ships around, so you do have sort of AI ships to, to fight with and shoot with and stuff. Oh, can I speed up a bit? Uh, it's not letting me go faster. Yeah, this, each of the ships seem to have a... A slightly different laser gun as well. Like this one's got like an actual laser beam. One of them's got um. Oh, somebody's uh, doing some sort of neurotoxin. Uh, some of them um have actual sort of machine gun type lasers. Uh, so it's interesting. So, so you can press. Uh, what is it? Yeah, swipe from the left to get the map up, so you can have a better, bit of closer look around. Uh, and we basically kind of go find them, follow the map. Down a little bit over here, and that's the planet we've already been to. You can't bump into the planets, funny enough. You just kind of uh, go around, you just kind of stop it next to them. Oh, actually, it's this way, isn't it? Here we go. What's this? Is this our base? Oh, it's, a spe it's an enemy spaceship. Let's shoot it, quick. Laser, baby, laser. Laser, laser, laser. Oh, this is a bit sort of trippy 3D going on here. There's too many layers of stuff going on with the UI stuff, and it's a bit sort of tricky to see, so. Can I speed up and catch up to him? And get, get away. Uh, but it's uh, an interesting one. I think it would be fun to try it online to see what it's actually like sort of with other people. Because, as I say, I've not played it with anybody else. So let me know if you do pick it up and maybe we'll try and get some games together and uh, and, pl and play some. So it could be interesting to kind of see... Oh, there we go. Destroyed him. There was no destroying sound, but I guess in space no one can hear you scream. So... You essentially shouldn't hear someone explode. But uh, yeah, an interesting app in the game. And uh, I think it's nice to kind of think that, you know, whoever's developed this, you know, the developer who's developed it, you know, he's put in this effort to make quite a functional space shooter. You know, one man team, whatever. Um, and, you know, I think it's, you know, up to us if we fancy the game to kind of encourage them to do more, to progress with this and to learn more themselves. To make bigger and better things, so you know it's up to you. It's two, um, two, no, is it two ninety nine on uh, Where VR? So check it out if you're interested. So there we go. That's a quick overview of Where VR and a couple of games and apps that are available on there. And um, because they're not available on the Oculus Go Store directly, you can buy the keys via this method, which I think is a nice kind of compromise and it's something that definitely, as I say, I say, going to keep an eye on for the Oculus Quest because I kind of feel like. The standard there is going to be pretty high, and this may be the avenue a lot of developers might have to go through while they sort of work on their games and apps. They can potentially release it and continue to work on it, make it better and better, and you guys can kind of get early access maybe this way. That might be quite an interesting way of uh, using this platform as well. Let me know what you think about where VR and those two games that I played. Uh, this wasn't paid or anything. I'm not sponsored by anyone. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. What do you think about it? What do you think about the two games I've shown? Uh, are there sort of thing you'd pay for anyway? You know, would you would you go out your way to pay for it? If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. That's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it. But do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it. I'll try to do better for next time. Become one of the Remarkables. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified when I next upload a video. And that's me done. I'm out. Have a virtual high five.